Hey guys, I'm Bex, your YouTube, and we are getting ready to connect. Um, today, January 2nd, 2017. Gosh, that's the first time I've said it out loud like that, and it sounded weird, but that's okay. We are going to start off the new year with a new modifier Monday. Um, I think I've decided that's the way I'm going to make these videos, this particular series, um, and I'll put the link below. Um, if you want to go back and check out episode one, which was, uh, I think we talked, I, I, uh, phrased it Monday modifiers in the first one a few weeks ago, but, um, I think modifier Monday sounds better. So this is going to be episode two of modifier Monday, and I'm going to try to make it quick and to the point, And we are going to talk about five words slash concepts, concepts and ideas and lessons stuff that we should carry into 2017, that we should carry with us throughout 2017 and live them out on a daily basis. So. Modifier Monday, episode two, and we're going with vowels again. So these modifiers are going to be, you know, one starting with A, E, I, O, U. Maybe we'll get a Y at the end. Who knows? Last time we just did five, but we might get a bonus. We'll see. Um, I did make a list here. So if you see me looking down, I'm checking my notes because I want to try to, like I said, condense this as much as I can for you all. So I'm not just, you know, rambling about the same thing in different words over and over again. So <clears throat> modifier Monday for January 2nd, 2017. Letter A. We're going to do sign language. How about that? I'll do the letters in sign language. So here's letter A for you. We are going to go with atypical. Now, um, well, you know what? Hold on just a sec. Let me go back. Rewind. Um, just a refresher on modifier, what the concept of the series is. A modifier, <clears throat> excuse me, is a uh, what, what the purpose of a modifier is, is it breathes life into sentences. It's a way for you to, you know, really put a picture or a concept in a reader's head when you're a writer using these modifiers. And they can be, you know, adjectives, adjective clauses, adverbs, adverb clauses, uh, prepositional phrases, absolute phrases, infinitive phrases. Um, I mean, they can, uh, there's a lot of stuff that can be a modifier, but basically... Um, we, so far, for the most part, are using modifiers um, in the adjective form. Or, or adverb, you know, whichever, one of those two, we've been using both um, to describe things that we should be or things, uh, you know what, forget that I said the SH word, I don't say should. To me, that's the worst SH curse word you can think of because, I mean, it, it's just, it's a disease. Should is the disease, but that's a topic for another video. So back to number one. Letter A for the five modifier, or the five words and lessons to carry with you throughout 2017. A, atypical. Now, that does not necessarily sound like a good thing. If you are having, well, for instance, I'll tell you this, and I'm getting some relief right now from one of my um, remedies that I took earlier of my trigeminal pain, like it's still there, the, the pain that I mentioned in my eye and ear and all three branches of that nerve, my facial and head pain. But um, I technically have what's called atypical trigeminal neuralgia, meaning that it's constant all the time instead of the classic or typical, um, which is different and has like uh, intermittent um, electric zap and shock-like feelings. Now, neither one is worse or better than the other. I was just using that as an example to explain atypical. Um, actually, I was using that example to explain why atypical, oftentimes when we when we hear it, we don't necessarily think, oh, that's awesome. I'm going to be atypical. That's I have this atypical thing. That's, that's so cool. It, well, I'm telling you right now, today, January 2nd, 2017, I just like saying that, guys. Um, oh, it's my daddy's birthday, so shout out to my daddy. Happy birthday! Um, being atypical is awesome, which also begins with an A, and it's amazing, which also begins with an A. Not a coincidence. Atypical simply means that you are different. And whoever tells you that being different than this or that or person A or B or whatever or talking with your hands or whatever. Anybody that tells you being different is not good probably isn't all that different. Or rather, no, let's say this. Everyone is different. They probably don't embrace their differences. And I'm telling you right now, one of the most important things you can do in life is to embrace your atypic atypicality, atypicalness. The fact that you're atypical, embrace that. Because that's one thing that makes you you. Um, you know, there there are all of these uh, you know, what do you when you listen to music, you know, I'm sure you, you may have a favorite genre or you may you may love all genres. Um, but 
if you're trying to break into any field, whether it's music, whether it's acting, whether it's uh, whatever, um, especially something that, but for, for, for example sake, let's, let's use something to illustrate, you know, a, a career that requires a lot of, you know, attention in the entertainment industry or anything like that. But really it applies to life in general. If, and heck, YouTube, let's use YouTube as an example. Um, if you're not different, then you're less likely to, well, I was going to say get noticed, but that's not the reason I'm saying this because I'm not trying to say it to get noticed. I'm just saying, think of the people who are the most successful, the people that are the happiest. And those two things are not necessarily linked. Um, and successful doesn't just mean money, money, money. Um, to me, happiness is success. Um, so if you're atypical, or I mean, think, think of all of the happiest people you know. Um, and I mean really happy, like like you can see the joy radiate in their face happy, not you see them smile on a picture on Facebook happy that was probably posed. And I want you to tell me if those people are what you would say, quote unquote, normal, because I personally don't believe the word normal exists. However, I do believe there are people who try to fit into this world idea of normal and don't embrace their atypicalness. And then the world is left without the gifts that, that those people have. Um, because being different is not a curse. It is a blessing. And as soon as you realize it's a blessing, you can then use that key, unlock your heart, see the gifts that are there, share your atypicalness with the world. Um, I'm wearing a Pokemon hat and a Green Lantern shirt. That's, that's clashing fandoms. Uh, but I bet it's atypical. I don't know if anybody else on YouTube right this second on January 2nd, 2017 is making a video representing two different fandoms, which is kind of bugging me now, but at least there's some green on both of them, right? Um, gotta catch them all on brightest day and blackest night. Hey, there you go. Maybe I'll write some fanfic. Anyway, atypical, uh, TLDR. Too long, don't read. Atypical is good. Don't worry about it. Don't try to push it away. Embrace it because that's you. Uh, letter E. A-E-I-O-U. We're gonna go with E. And this is actually two. It's really the same one, just two different forms. One's the gerund form. One's, one's, um, not. <laughs> um, Encouraging and encouraged for a word to carry into 2017. And I am going to read from my notes here because I want you to hear the definition the way they said it on this. Um, this is just short when there are many definitions, but um, I'm going to read it for both encouraged and encouraging. So encouraged says inspired with confidence, hope, courage, or optimism. And then encouraging is um, giving courage, hope, or confidence, auspicious, and supporting. Now, the cool thing about this is even if you are not feeling encouraged yourself, if you are feeling down, if you are feeling like just you really are grasping for hope, you're grasping for something, and you just really need some some, some encouragement to get through, you know, situation X, Y, Z. Um, even if you're not feeling encouraged, if you force yourself to go out of your way to encourage someone else, whether that's sending them, you know, a short text with a quote or a Bible verse or just a, hey, I was thinking of you, just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you or I'm praying for you or here's this funny picture of a dog and I thought it was cute and I wanted to make you smile or, you know, just had you on my mind, thought this meme was funny and wanted to send it your way, you know, whatever whatever it is. Um, I mean, and it can be bigger than that too. You could, you could volunteer in your community and be encouraging to people. You could volunteer at, you know, hospice or whatever your local equivalent is and volunteer uh, to help, um, uh, you know, to help take care of people, be a volunteer caregiver. You can, um, you can record a YouTube video. It doesn't have to be something like this. It could literally be you for 10 seconds, just reading a quote or saying something um, to try to make someone smile. Uh, there, there are, there is no limit to the number of ways in which you can encourage someone. And if you're having trouble finding an encouragement for yourself, like I said, if you go out of your way to find ways to encourage others, even if you don't feel like it, even when you're not encouraged yourself, by encouraging others, you will encourage yourself. And I think that's something that we all need a lot more of. So 2017, bring on the encouragement. Number three, letter I. We are going to go with impassioned, which simply means characterized by intense emotion. 
now. We all know that I'm a fan of emotions. I love emotions. I love feeling my emotions. I don't always love the way that all of them feel, but I love the fact that I'm able to feel them and I'm able to let myself give each emotion that comes up or uh, yeah, each emotion that comes up the, uh, you know, the, the attention and the feeling, the experience of feeling it, that it requires, then I embrace being able to let those go after they've been felt for the amount that they need to be, if they need to be let go. Some things are good and they don't have to be let go. If it's a negative emotion that comes up, I don't stuff it down. I'm still going to feel it. And then I'll just let it go after I've given it its due time. However, being impassioned, characterized by intense emotion, 2017 needs some of that, guys. 2017 needs many of us to be impassioned and unapologetically so. Because when you're impassioned, when you have a when you have something that you're passionate about, when you um you know put that into practice and you work at that and you whatever that is, even you know, me with a cron I'm I'm sitting here on my bed recording this. Um, there are many things today that make me not want to um Sorry about that. My husband just got home and my beagle jumped down from the bed. So I'll be right back in just a second. I'm going to let her out of the bedroom. Give me just a sec. Okay. Sorry guys. I'm back. Um, so we're talking about impassioned characterized by intense emotion. Um, if you went, when, no, I won't even say if we're not going to, we're not going to go with if we're going to deal with certainties here. When you find something you're passionate about, when you find what your passion is, what you know that you're supposed to do, something that you just are so strongly, um, you know, have such strong feelings about, and then you take that passion and you use it, um, whether that's like I was getting ready to say before all that happened with the dog, I, you know, I have a heart, I have a passion to help people through my experience, through what I have experienced. I have a passion to share the fact that my faith is what has gotten me through these experiences. I have a passion for sharing my experiences and Jesus's message through my rap. Um, and this is one of the many vehicles where I'm able to share my passions on YouTube. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm in bed 95% of the time. I'm not able to get out of bed. I'm probably to 90 right, right now. The past couple of weeks have been a little better, but, um, but, you know, just because you're, you're, you know, struggling with something or you're not exactly where you want to be, you can't do it exactly perfectly, you know, it doesn't, heck, I posted a video a couple weeks ago of me doing a horribly rough copy of one of my raps and, uh, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it's something I'm passionate about and I wanted to share it in hopes that maybe somebody else would enjoy it or get something from it. Um, and passion is what's going to change the world. They say love makes the world go around. That's true. We all need to love. I think we all know that. We just all need to start practicing it more. But passion also does it. Being impassioned is what gets things done. The Nobel, P Nobel Peace Prize would not be awarded to someone who wasn't passionate because they wouldn't have any drive to do anything. So passion, being impassioned, since we're talking about an I, that's the word here, impassioned throughout, uh, throughout 2017. We want to go to O, number four on our list, um, observant. Be observant in 2017. Be observant of yourself. Be observant of others. If you're on Facebook or any other social media, be observant of what you see. And the important part about that last one on online, be observant, and I'll add a little bit, and research. Do your research before you get into a conversation or comment on something that, you know, you might not really know exactly what you're saying. Um... Or, you know, just be observant about yourself and your life. If you notice that you have a relationship that is toxic, that is dragging you down, that is, you know, just not making you feel good. Or if you have a shirt that you, um, well, like for me, here's, 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 um, here's a, here's an example, a, a personal example. Um, say there, there were some clothes recently that I just got rid of that I've held on to for 14 years because I wore them at my sickest slash lowest weight. Um, and I realized that every time I looked at those clothes or even the fact of knowing that they were in my closet, um, for whatever reason, cause I'm, cause I'm a pack rat who can't get rid of anything or I was, I'm getting better at it. Um, I just noticed that anytime I thought about or saw that shirt or those pants or whatever, I was just, you know, this veil of dread just washed over me and I just felt so 
weighed down. It's like I had a big weight, you know, big anvil sitting on my body. Like it was, it, it didn't make me feel good. And I was able to observe that and notice it. And you know what? I finally just took the step and I got all my clothes that brought up sick memories and things that didn't make me feel good. And I just, you know, I didn't throw them out unless they had holes and stuff. I donated them or we're going to take them down to donate. Um, and some of them are going to be consigned. But, um, you know, I was, I was observant on how I was feeling and it goes back to emotions. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Pay attention to what your body's telling you. Um, it could also apply to when you're eating, uh, you know, be observant. You know, if you are sitting around the house and you think, oh, I'm hungry, sit with yourself for a minute first and think, am I really hungry? And observe what your body's telling you. Because like a lot of people will have that at 11 o'clock at night. And I'm not excluding myself because sometimes it happens to all of us. Even those of us that have had eating disorders for half of their lives, it happens. You get hungry late at night sometimes. Um, and, and it's not always wrong. You know, sometimes you eat then and it's, it's, you know, you need to. You know, you, I'm not, I am not telling you to use this as a way to not eat. So I want to mark, I want to say that right now before I explain it any further. This is not an excuse to not eat. I'm just using this as an example of listening to your body. For instance, if you have had, you know, three meals and a few small snacks throughout the day and your body is actually physically satiated, but at 11 o'clock at night you have this urge like, oh, I think I want to eat something. I just want you to be observant. Just take, you know, a few seconds and be observant. And say, am I doing this because I'm bored? Uh, am, I, am I having this thought? That, am I thinking I want to eat because I usually do it and it's a habit? Or am I actually hungry? And the answer may be, I, daggone it, I'm actually hungry. I'm going to go get something to eat. I don't like eating right before bed, but I'm going to go get something to eat. And if, you know, if, if something else comes up and you realize, oh, this is just something I do every night. I'm not really that hungry. I'm not physically feeling it. Now, I will preface this by saying when you have an eating disorder or are in recovery from an eating disorder, um, until you know you are at a place where you can trust your hunger cues 100%, this cannot always be effective. I'm just using this again as an example um, for those who can. And our last, well, no, hold on. So be observant about yourself, about others, about the world. Learn what's going on in the world around you, in your community, in your state, in this country, um, in the world at large. Learn what's going on because unless you're observant, um, you are going to be so out of the loop unless you make an effort to be observant and learn things and learn what's going on so you can be able to have conversations and so you can actually have a clue, um, you know, about what's going on in 2017. Even if you're, like I said, housebound, you know, that's still something you can do. Th thanks to the internet, you can still do it. Last on our list, and again, it's got a little longer than I thought, but still a little shorter than some. Uh, number five, we're going to go with you, as in the letter U, sign language again, the letter U. And we're going to say this is going to be unpredictable is our modifier for you, which simply means I can't read my own handwriting. No, that's not what it means. It means, oh. I could have explained this, but I wanted to read what I wrote down. It just says, not able of being foretold. Now, it's a hard one for me. This is a hard one for me, and that's why I put it on here, because I need this as much, if not more, than a lot of you watching. Unpredictable. Learn to be okay with things being unpredictable. With a chronic illness, things are often unpredictable. In life, even if you don't have a chronic illness, things are often unpredictable. But while you can't predict what's going to happen, you can still be okay with whatever happens because you can choose how you're going to react to that, to whatever unpredictable thing happens. Unpredictability can be and often is scary. I am not going to deny that. However, when you learn that you can choose how you react to whatever unpredictable thing comes up or that you can choose to embrace the unpredictable and say, listen, hey, unpredictable, come on, show me what you got for me. What can I learn from you? Show me what you got. I want to learn it. I want to learn it. What lesson are you trying to teach me? Why, are, why is this happening? Which can go back to number O, be observant about the things that are unpredictable that come up and then embrace all of that as a learning experience and a chance to grow and extend that out into the world as joy, as someone who has, you know, been through this and you can then help others learn to embrace it as well. I mean, come on, guys. What is better than connecting and being in a universal, you know, just state of simpatico 
I mean, that I know that that sounds, you know, oh, world peace. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you as a single person can make a difference in the people that, in the lives of the people that you know in person or online by doing these things, you know, by being atypical and sharing your own unique gifts with the world, by um, encouraging others and therefore also being encouraged yourself, which can go either way, you know, in either order, it doesn't matter. Um, by staying impassioned, whatever your passion is, stay impassioned about it because it's important. Don't let anyone ever convince you that something you are passionate about is not important. And if you don't know what you're passionate about, or if you maybe know what it is and you don't know what to do or the next steps to take, just, just stay, stay in your passion, passion, immerse yourself in it as much as you can. And just trust the pieces will fall into place when they're supposed to be, or when they're supposed to fall into place, because guess what? They will. Um... And then the last two, again, just, just to restate, you know, stay observant and embrace the unpredictable. I mean, that guys, that's those five things we need to do in 2017. And there are many more things we need to do in 2017, but those are five of them. And I'm going to add a six here. I said I, I said I might add a six at the end. I am going to go with why. So we're going to go with why here. Um, A-E-I-O-U and sometimes why, and this is a sometimes, because why is just the word you. Or... No, we're just going to stick with you, because that could be an adjective. Be you. Be the best version of you that you can be in any given moment, because you are the only one of you that there is in this world. I'm not you. You can't be me. So let's just be ourselves. Be yourself. You are a gift to the world. You are You are worth... worth um, you're worth allowing yourself to be yourself. And you if you're alive on this earth, you owe it to the world to be yourself and to do the things that are you and uniquely you. So um, those are my words for today, guys. Uh, just to review the list, we have atypical, encouraging, impassioned, observant, unpredictable, and you. So happy Modifier Monday, episode two. Happy 2017 on January 2, <laughs> second, and I hope you all have a great rest of the week and a great start to your year and just a great year. Keep the, keep the modifiers in mind, guys. Carry them with you throughout 2017. See you later.